Uh, Royce, uh, how you seem kind of maybe I'll be on the roster, maybe I won't yesterday. How, uh, how sure were you that you were going to play today? And, and hey, what did it feel like to play today? Huh. Yeah, this morning, um, you know, when I saw that, you know, I was making the roster um, from Rocco and um, I felt better. Um, you know, hopefully it was connected to mental, my mental state of mind. I was just excited for the day, um, and we could keep that going. But um, it was it was a blessing to play today, man. That atmosphere was electric. Pablo, you prepare so intensely for these starts, and you kind of wore that. You you wore the Santana jersey. You kind of understood what this game meant to the fans. What did it mean to go out and deliver in a game one like this for them? Yeah, it's it's extremely important, you know, like uh, really game one of any series is the most important one. I've said it before, set the tone, and that's, I mean, that's as true as it gets. You want to set the tone, you want to set the stage, and really let the competition know that we have a plan and we're going to try to do everything to execute it. Uh, and yeah, like the Santana jersey thing, you know, some people believe in faith, some people believe that the things we do today right what we do tomorrow, but sometimes some things line up too perfectly to pass on 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 those opportunities. So I was just happy that I was able to, for the most part, execute my part, uh, my plan, do my part, and um, do uh, the best I could to, you know, like put the team in the best position to win. I had a bunch of help from Royce here sitting next to me. The defense was on point all day long. Like they showed up like how we expected to show up. Um, you know, the fans have been believing in us for so long. It was just a matter of like believing in ourselves and coming to the game, playing loose, understanding that we didn't need to change who we were or like our approach and just go out there and have fun, man. And it was electric and we embraced that and we were just having fun out there. Royce, you showed so much emotion during the starting lineup. You were ready to go, yet you had to DH. You didn't have the time to be on the field to kind of decompress and get control of your emotions. How were you able to handle being just the DH and not getting out on the field? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think I just took a lot of advice from Byron Buxton, who's done that a lot this year, obviously, um, about staying warm, riding the bike in between innings, um, you know, maybe standing up while the team's on defense, similar to your approach like you would playing defense. Obviously, you're not fielding a ball, but at least you're on your feet. You're keeping the blood flow going. Um, and honestly, this atmosphere, truly, like when I tell you it was electric, it, it brought that electricity into my body. I felt different. Um, my heart was beating every, it was the most nervous game, exciting game I've ever played in my life. It was so much fun. Uh, Pablo, you, you spoke yesterday about how, with regards to that 18 game losing streak, that you guys were gonna kind of embrace it, that maybe sort of draw some motivation from it. Um, how do you think maybe that approach might have helped you guys ultimately overcome that? Yeah, no, like I think this group of guys, you know, like spending s like two months of spring training, six months of the regular season, you know, 182 days, if you count the 20 days of we get a season. So like I was able to really gauge the atmosphere, you know, the mentality that we had going into this, you know, this game one, like uh, this game meant a lot to us for many, many reasons. And uh, we just wanted to, you know, like put an end to something that was, you know, very unfortunate for, to our beloved fans. You know, like the fans have been so great to us. They support us, they root for us, no matter the situation. So it just, it felt right giving this to them. And the way I see it now, now we have a new streak going. We're one and oh, and that's the one we're gonna focus on right now. Pablo, uh, I guess Royce, too, if you want to chime in on this, too. But from your vantage point in the fourth inning, that play that went under Polanco's glove and Correa able to make that play to, to throw out Bichette at home, from, take, can you kind of give us, from your vantage point, what you saw there on that play? And did you think that that play was even going to be able to be made? You know, that, that, was, that was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it when it happened. I see Polanco charging in. You know, he's trying to make a play. Kier Meyer's a fast runner. He's always been one of the fastest runners in, in, in the team he plays for. So, like, I saw Polanco coming in full speed, and he had one shot. You know, he, like, took the glove out, tried to get rid of it quick, didn't catch it. I see uh, Bichet stepping on third, and I think I saw the third base coach, like, putting the stop sign in. It's crazy how fast we think of these things. I think, like, I mean, if he keeps going, he might have a shot. But then, like, somehow, way, Carlos came from nowhere. And, I mean, he made the big play in the big moment. And, I mean, we all know who Carlos Correa is when, you know, when the stage is big, when the, when the stage is, like, 
this big. You know, he shows up for those moments, and he made an unbelievable play. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to sell Brian Jeffers short either. He was he, he stayed engaged every single second of the play, and he made, like, a tag. And that was a very big, big moment of that game. You know, it could have been bases loaded if the runner doesn't go, but then he ended up being a game and I'm uh, sorry, an inning ending play. Unbelievable play. Royce, you mentioned the emotion that you had a lot of it pregame, but even in your first at bat, it looked like you kind of took a look around, like a 360, not it took it. What were you trying to experience like in that moment? Yeah, just uh, take it all in. You never know when you're going to be in this situation. Um, and we've had a heck of a season, and I just wanted to take it all in. Man, these fans showed up for us, and, um, you know, honestly, I got that advice from Joe Maurer uh, through a text today, just telling me to take it in. And just he said that's one thing that he, he would do is take it in and don't, don't regret, you know, the moment that you're in. And so that's what I did, man. All those fans, they, they really they stepped up for us, man. It was special. Royce, uh, just wondering what your readiness uh, to play third base would be if that were to present itself this this series. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm just taking it day by day. Um, you know, I'm working as hard as I can, recovering as much as possible to to be ready anyway for my team. Um, and I think that's more of a, a Rocco question or the staff question um, because this team, we have guys that can play all over and make plays like you saw tonight. So um, that defense is truly special. Right. Royce, I remember you, you kind of shake your heads at the, you couldn't be in disbelief at the grand slams. You've never hit two home runs in a game at this level before. Do you ever surprise yourself by uh, what you managed to achieve? Uh, yeah, it's, that's a God thing. I'm just blessed to be a part of it. I, <laughs> I mean, I, it felt like I was blacked out in, in the whole game, but uh, especially in those moments when I was on the field, my heart was racing. Uh, it was just the human nature of it. Like when you have I don't know, 40, 50,000 people cheering. Um, it was it was special. I was just going off of that energy and playing the game that I've loved this whole life and um, had fun doing it. I'm also amazed by the things Royce does, by the way. Uh, Pablo, this two-part, did you have the Johan jersey at home? Like, you owned it? Okay. And then how does – obviously, the streak is the biggest story ending, but how does it feel – for all you've talked about idolizing Johan growing up to get the first win since he had one against the Yankees, you know, basically 19 years ago. No, yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess in a way I don't believe in because, you know, like that happened so long ago when I was really starting to understand baseball and admiring Johan Santana, the player. He was the role model on and off the field. He he still is. So, I guess moments like that, mo moment moments like that, you know, like you kind of feels like they write themselves up. And it was an unfortunate streak going. And I'm sorry that so many people had to go through it, suffer through it. But um, yeah, I feel like just coming coming into today, the energy like from every single person in the clubhouse and then out in the stadium just felt like on match, you know, like anything like that I've ever felt before. So I think just like it was just about really embracing that, you know, like without pressure, there's no expectations. So like pressure is a privilege and then just like understanding that mentality, using it, using it in our favor, you know, like you always want to feel some pressure because that, that means that there is an opportunity to do, to do something amazing. I don't know if as a team we all felt it, I felt it, but like I acknowledge it, I accepted it, and then I just put it on my shoulder and like try to go with it. Pablo, Royce, congratulations. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Everyone wants to know what stars look like. That's those two guys are stars, <laughs> both of those two. Rock Rocco, having having been here for a bit, what do you think this win means to this city? Well, I think um, fans here support this organization through and through. Generations do. Um, they love the team, and they want they want to enjoy things like what they just saw at the ballpark today. Uh, the, the ballpark, I think, was a great representation today of how the, the community here feels about, um, feels about us and, and what we do. Um, it was, I thought the place was going to split, split open and melt, like honestly. Like it was uh, out of this universe, out there on the field. Um, the fans took over the game. They helped us win today.
they helped us win the game and they helped us uh, uh, in, in so many ways out there. You could see it if you're just visually watching and, and seeing how the players were reacting on the other side of the field. Um, it's, it's, it's the energy, but it's actually a challenging environment to play in right now. So uh, I couldn't be more uh, uh, excited and, and, and thankful for, for what they did for us today to help us get over this, uh, this hump. And now we're, we're back on the train now. How do you and everybody in there kind of balance the emotions of that, this being a meaningful win, such a meaningful win for this city, but also it's in the grand scheme of things, it's one win, and you guys as a team have been working toward a championship. How do you kind of balance the emotions of that? Yeah, well, I think it's fine to uh, celebrate an exceptional win because I thought we did uh, a lot of good things on the field today, the things that we we wanted to do, and I'll, I can talk about those things, but um, I think it's fine to celebrate that. Uh, I think there's not one person in our clubhouse who uh, doesn't realize that there is uh, uh, a lot of work still to be done. Um, and as soon as we change and shower up um, and eat dinner and head home and go to bed, um, we'll reset and we'll get ready for tomorrow. And uh, uh, again, a lot of work still to do. Uh, Rocco, uh, what can you say about the uh, defense uh, that you saw today? Uh, Taylor uh, making a couple of big catches and uh, Correa yeah. uh, saving that run. Well, <clears throat> I have my notes, Phil, because I don't remember everything all the time. Um, Michael Taylor took over the game in center field. Um, he's been doing that all year for us. Anyone that's watched us has seen that from Michael Taylor. Uh, he contributes on both sides of the ball. Um, just uh, uh, when you when you make an out, a lot of them are routine. But when you make an out that is not routine, and you go above and beyond and do that, it it just stops the inning. You know, when you start just just recording outs, racking up outs, um, you're taking away base runners and creating an out on the same play. Those things flip the game completely on its head. Um, and, and Michael Taylor did that for us and flipped the game in our favor because of the way he, he patrolled center field. The play that Carlos Correa made, that, that play should be shown, that, that should be shown everywhere over and over again. Um, the anticipation, knowing that that's, that's one outcome that could happen. The ball could end up where it ended up. Uh, you know, getting there. You know, getting down, making the play. It, those are awkward plays. You never practice that play, ever. And it's a play that, uh, again, I'm going to enjoy watching in the future. And um, I think every, every baseball fan, it's just a hell of a baseball play. And if you like watching the biggest players making the biggest plays in the, in the biggest games, then you should go watch that play. It was, it was fantastic. Donovan Solano made, made a great play at the end of the game, too. Uh, and and the, the balls hit, you know, Duran did the right thing to cover and get over there quick. He did a good job getting over there. That's far from a routine play. Uh, as well, and I'm probably forgetting some other things, but I think we did some positive things defensively. Uh, Rocco, I know Jorge Polanco is playing a little out of position uh, today. Are you comfortable with him being back third base tomorrow? And what can you say really about the performance of your bullpen today? Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely comfortable with Jorge playing third base. Um, uh, trust me, he's going to, you know, Go to bed again, like I just said. Wake up uh, and and get ready. Go out there, get his work in. We keep it simple, and uh, we'll get him prepared to to go out there and do his job. He'll be fine. Um, our bullpen. Uh, that's kind of what postseason bullpen uh, performances look like. That's what you're. That's what you're looking for from your guys. It's going to be one after the other. You know, it's going to be uh, guys pitching. Um, in, in big spots where, where we think they match up good. Uh, and every single guy that we turned to went out there and uh, threw great. I mean, that, that's, that's actually the way you draw it up. And we're playing against a good team. Their offense is good. There's not going to be innings where we're just going to fly through innings um, <clears throat> and face, uh, you, know, you know, it's not going to be easy is really what I'm saying. So uh, our, our bullpen was fantastic. When you when you went home last night, how how much uncertainty was there about whether or not Royce would be available today? I felt fairly confident that he would be our DH. That's that's what that's what I was feeling when I uh, when I left the ballpark. Um, 
Nick Paparest, our head trainer, uh, felt the same. So normally when he feels something, almost every time, I'm, feel, I'm gonna end up feeling somewhere right in that vicinity. So um, we've talked through this so much recently, our guys that were coming back and, and dealing with uh, uh, health, you know, physical issues. Um, and we, we got to a really good point um, with Royce where we felt he could go hit. Again, we, we saw it when he hit a ground ball today. He was under control when he ran down uh, the first baseline. He can run, but um, what we don't want is him uh, extending himself to the point where uh, we, we have any sort of setback. And he, d he did a good job with that. We've talked about Royce stepping up in those big moments, but to arrive on the October stage like this in a game like this, I mean, what can you even say about him at this point? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I've tried to uh, stretch my vocabulary and uh, drop, you know, all the great adjectives. And um, I mean, it's I can't believe sometimes the things that he's doing. Um, they're that impressive. But to be able to, uh, uh, you know, do it, you know, come back experience everything that goes along with those moments which you can ride there can be highs and there can be uh you know a lot of emotion but the fact that he's able to still come to the ballpark the next day um get his work in head out onto the field not overthink things which i think can happen when you start having a lot of success like that he does such a great job of uh of, of getting ready to go and 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 then then just performing over and over again he's a he's a special player and um uh what we're seeing uh again haven't haven't seen people doing the things that he's doing right now, and we've all been around some good players, but uh, he's uh, he's good. The rookie pitching in front of his hometown crowd. What gave you the confidence in Louis in that spot? Probably the biggest spot he's ever pitched in. Yeah, um, huge out. Uh, well, it's hard just not to say he's thrown the ball so well out of the bullpen for us. Uh, I'm not worried about the moment. He, he can handle the moment. He, he comes in to throw strikes and uh, get ahead and then, um, you know, go at people with the great stuff that he has. Uh, he's performed so well. He's handled the move to the bullpen so well that um, he was a guy I, I was waiting to get him into a game, uh, th this game. I was, I was hoping that we got into a good spot where we could bring Louis Varlin in. Uh, he only got one out. Part of me was like, man, I want to let this guy kind of roll a little bit because um, that's what he's done. He's thrown multiple innings a lot for us. Um, but getting Caleb uh, hot and getting him into the game for that run of hitters also made sense. So uh, luckily, uh, Lou will be ready to go, and um, you know we can ask really anything of him uh, going forward in the series. Nick Gordon also might be the best hype man that I have seen on the end of the bench uh, in a very, very long time. And, uh, uh, of course, he, you know, he'd love to be out there in the action, but um, the fact that he, like, I could hear the feel, feel the crowd responding to him, and he loved it. So I loved it, too. That's it. You got it. Thank you, guys.